In this video, I just want to show you some settings that you should apply if you're using Snowflake. And maybe some other databases, but I just want to show you this. So in here, I've went ahead and put in my credentials for Snowflake. As you can see, I'm on step three of three. So step one is like selecting the database you want. Step two is like adding your credentials. Step three is like, okay, we've successfully connected to your instance, database instance. Here's some additional settings. You can modify this if you want. <clears throat> We're going to set this in our config file later. The main thing is for performance, I want to cancel queries on window unload event. So this, what this means is if I leave that window, like if I'm running a query, executing something and I leave, I want it to cancel the, the whole thing. This just tells Snowflake to stop working because we're not looking at the data. This also may be a something that can help improve cost. So if you're running a bunch of queries and then you're like, oh, never mind, I don't need it, and you just close the window, there's no point in Snowflake or Google or Amazon to keep running that query and then returning data for something you're not going to look at. So that's all that does. You don't need to enable a synchronous query execution. That's automatically going to happen once you configure uh, the salary workers and your cache. So you don't really need to enable this. This was, I, I know it sounds confusing, but I asked, like, do I need to enable this? But you don't need to enable it. The salary workers will just automatically do it. I think this will be deprecated eventually in the UI, but you don't need to enable this. Security, if you have any, like, if you're running an enterprise environment and you need, like, root certificates or whatever, this is where you're going to put that in there. So once you log in through some whatever account you're using, you're going to put your certificates in here that make sure that the data is encrypted, things like that. For this part of the tutorial, I'm not going to add anything here, but if you are in an enterprise environment, then you most likely want to have a root certificate. Otherwise, there's probably some security concerns. I'm going to click allow data upload here. This will allow us to take a CSV file of data. Maybe your customer gives it to you, a client, whoever. Maybe you just have some sample data you need to upload. Maybe you're exporting data from another database and you want to upload it. This just makes it super easy so you don't have to go through the hassle of using a terminal and creating a database and saying upload this JSON file and blah, blah, blah. At least that is how it is for Snowflake. Snowflake, you have to, there's a whole process to upload data. But this makes it super easy, and this is one of the features that we actually really wanted and why we chose Superset for a previous company that I worked for is to allow people to upload data. Otherwise, we, we had customers sending us tons of data, and we'd have to go through this lengthy process to get data to our Snowflake instance and then have to run some join query this allows us to just upload the data and we don't have to worry about it. Other settings, really nothing in here. But the main thing is, if you for your SQL lab, depending on what you want to do, if you want to allow people to create tables or whatever, I'm just going to say we want it to be explored. And we want to allow people to upload data here. This isn't a security concern because people can upload data, malicious data, or they could upload whatever. So it really depends on if you want to allow that user to be able to do that and depend on the database, maybe you create a, a table that's safe that it doesn't really matter what gets uploaded there. So I don't want to make this a global thing where like, yeah, you should always enable this uh, allow upload data. But for this tutorial, we're going to enable it because I think it's a useful feature. Then you're going to click finish. And we'll wait for it to load. It always has to load. And then we'll go to our SQL editor. I'm not going to save any passwords. All right, so for here, I want to drop down Snowflake. What's really cool here is it's going to upload the scheme, or it's going to, like, go fetch the schema, what it is. I don't even know what's in here. I just know that it's sample data of some sort. I don't know what's in here. Let's just do information. And then I'm just going to do a select all. And from, let's see what tables we have. Um, let's do... I don't know. Applicable roles. Found something. I don't know what's in here, but we'll do that. It's kind of nice that it also automatically auto completes. I'm going to run this. So I'm going to limit it to a thousand. It's going to run this query and fetch us some data, hopefully. And here we see we have some. These are all the, the roles in our database. 
This is a brand new account, so I don't expect much here. And this is going to do a preview. So we'll go back to our results. But it's kind of cool. So if you have like a large data set, it'll do like a preview of what to expect based off the limit that you have here. So I could limit this to 10, get a preview of what the data is and say, oh, that's not what I'm looking for. But maybe I want something in databases. It'll do the same thing. Um, but let's just see what's in our database. We should only have two databases here. Let's see what we have. We should probably change this to databases. And click run. So now we have our data hooked up. But as you can see, if I go back to applicable roles, it's going to actually go to Snowflake and rerun that entire query versus just fetching it from cache. So if we already ran a query, we don't want it to go to Snowflake to go fetch results. We want it to go to our Redis servers and get those results. And we want to make sure that we're not always fetching cache because we want it to expire at some point in time so we can get fresh data. But we don't, if we just ran this like a second ago, like we don't need it to go back to Snowflake to fetch the data. But we don't have that configured. So in the next video.